This is Glow in the Dark Radio. 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 The Science Fiction Podcast with original independent science fiction written and performed by Mike Luoma with music by Kevin McLeod the Vatican Assassin Trilogy and the Adventures of Alibi Jones by Mike Luoma are available in ebook, trade paperback and audiobook wherever you find your books online get links and details at glowinthedarkradio.com This is the Science Fiction Podcast, Glow in the Dark Radio. I'm your host, your writer and reader, Mike Luoma. And I've got Chapter 11 of Vatican Assassin, 15th Anniversary Edition. As we head through the next episode of Glow in the Dark Radio, BC, our Vatican Assassin, has been waiting for word from the Vatican on his situation. He talked to the Pope last time around and... When he told the Pope what had happened, the Pope was like, hey, your cover could be blown there, B.C. So, he's waiting to hear what the Vatican wants to do. Our voice cameos continue. There's a little bit from Keith as the Cardinal. Keith Hughes is portraying Cardinal Anderson in this special edition. He's the voice cameo we hear in this chapter. And Keith's stuff is at penslinger.com, his podcast and his fiction. So, if you're looking for... Something a little different, some time travel science fiction, head over there to penslinger.com. And again, my thanks to Keith for doing the voice of the Cardinal for this special 15th anniversary edition audiobook of Vatican Assassin. That's on the way in just a couple. Since this is Thanksgiving weekend, I want to thank those of you who support the podcast as patrons through Patreon. If you'd like to do that, you can. Patreon.com slash glow in the dark radio is where to go. I have three different tiers, three different membership levels $2, $5, and $10 a month. It's entirely up to you whether you want to do this or not, but I do have people who do. Yes, big thanks to those who are supporters. I've had some people who have supported this podcast for years as patrons, so pretty awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I haven't been able to do as much writing in the Alibi Jones world as I would have liked to this year because I've had another book trying to come out. So I'm still working on a new Alibi Jones novel and I've gotten more ideas and like the entire, the story has fleshed out in my mind beyond what it was when I started writing it. So it's there. I know it wants to be written, but I had this book I had to write about Stone sites. When you're a writer, sometimes it, 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 it isn't always up to you what you're writing. What comes through comes through, you know? So I had to get this one out. And I'm just about done. So once this is out, then I'll be able to get back into my Alibi Jones groove, I hope. That's the plan, anyway. And once I do that, I'll start to give my patrons new Alibi Jones chapters, because they've already had a few from this new book. A reminder, you can get the ebook of this Vatican Assassin 15th Anniversary Edition for free. Pretty much everywhere except for Amazon. Amazon doesn't like to give away free stuff. It doesn't like to let you give away free stuff. Let's put it that way. Unless you agree to be beholden to them and exclusive and all kinds of stuff. And then even then they only give you like a week or so. So at any rate, other places are much cooler. And so you can go to most other places, whether it's Apple Books or Google Play or Barnes and Noble or Kobo, any other place that sells ebooks, you'll be able to get Vatican Assassin, the 15th anniversary edition, for free. And if you only use Amazon in the Kindle, well, then it's 99 cents, and I'm sorry. We will check out Chapter 11. A Vatican Assassin, the 15th Anniversary Edition, next on Glow in the Dark Radio.
50 years ago, Mira, humankind's last hope to find new resources, departed the solar system. Seven years into her mission, she disappeared. She has returned. SNR Black, a Seoul Federation Marine Corps vessel, is sent to retrieve her from certain destruction in the Kuiper Belt beyond Pluto. What they find will change humankind forever. From Parsec award-winning author Paul E. Cooley, Derelict, Marines, part one of the Derelict Saga, combines military sci-fi, space opera, mystery, and suspense to create a journey you won't forget. Podcast available at shadowpublications.com. Paperback and ebook available from amazon.com. Some mysteries shouldn't be solved. Now here's Chapter 11 of Vatican Assassin, the 15th Anniversary Edition, on Glow in the Dark Radio. Two weeks. Two fucking weeks. BC has heard nothing from the OPO in two weeks. In the two weeks, the Vatican's been hit one more time. Another barrage as fierce as the last two. Another UIN sneak attack. The moon has not been hit again. B.C. has done his PR flak job, standing loyally by the Cardinal's side, issuing four press releases in the two weeks, and generally playing his role as the Vatican PR man. He's laid low, not even taking the governor up on his lunch invite as of yet. And with the OPO out of touch, B.C.'s only been getting the UTZ-approved version of events from the news reports. The UIN continues its media blackout. The media speculates on the motives behind the UIN attacks. Most news reports attribute the new wave of UIN attacks, including the hits on the Vatican, to further religious extremism on the part of the UIN. The analysts, warning against repeating the mistakes of the past, say the UIN has gone beyond politics, bringing religion into the war. But it's always been in it. Religion has. It's what it's been all about. Well, religion and money. Nothing changes. We're still savages. Cavemen in nicer pelts, when you get right down to it. No matter how much technology we use, no matter how far into space we go. (laughs) Cavemen in space. (laughs) Like that one. Clubbing each other over the head with our high-tech clubs. Ah, yet another fun-filled day of flackery. As he enters the Cardinal's office, he sees the Cardinal is waiting for him. Ah, Campion, good. You're a wanted man today, you know. Wanted? What the fuck? What? Yes, you see, the Pope himself has requested a call from you, and the Governor says you're supposed to do lunch sometime, and he'd like to know if you can meet him today. You're wanted by some pretty fancy company, Campion. You bastard. Wanted my ass. No need to scare me like that. Thank you, sir. Would you excuse me? Certainly. I'll check back with you later, Cardinal. BC heads back to his rooms to check in with the Vatican, his heart beating faster than normal. Wanted. Geez, when he said that, I felt my stomach flip. Didn't think it was the good kind of wanted. I'm getting too paranoid. Hope it doesn't show. Glad to hear the Vatican finally called. Through the Cardinal again. Must be to keep up appearances. God, I hope there's a new assignment. And I guess I really should have lunch with Edwards. He's not so bad. I actually kind of like the guy. Cardinal Mbeke answers when BC powers up the CCU and contacts the Vatican. Mbeke is an old friend of BC's one of his first instructors in the OPO. Campion, how are you? I heard you got banged up pretty good. I'm okay, Mbeke. I've had some time to heal. Seems like years. BC plays up a yawn for dramatic effect. Well, this should cure your boredom. I have an assignment for you. 
Am I coming back to Earth? No. We want to keep you in your current PR assignment on the moon for now. The less waves you make, the better. We still don't know how much the UIN knows about you. So then what? Another assignment here on the moon? Wouldn't that be just as risky? No, not on the moon nor on Earth. We need you to travel from Lunar Prime to one of the old orbital stations. Used to belong to the Sultan of Brunei. No kidding. Who's it belong to now? Nobody, really. It's been officially deserted for years. Place is called Fortune Station, built almost a hundred years ago. We're sending complete info via courier. Already on the way. Look for a package tomorrow. So if nobody's there, why are you sending me there? There are easier ways to get rid of me, Mbeke. BC laughs. BC, would we ever do something like that to you? Mbeke says in a falsely sweet tone, then laughs. Don't answer. Flattery will get you nowhere. Mbeke's tone darkens. The station's been taken over by a neo-Christian cult. They've been squatting the station for over five years. A cult, huh? What do you want me to do, evict them? Why now? We don't care who lives there. But their leader has become a threat. How so? He's a charismatic former cardinal, whose followers are devoted to him. His radical interpretation of the Bible marginalized him back in the 90s in the Roman Catholic Church. Part of the whole back-to-the-roots thing ten years ago. Something in him snapped during the reunification, and he broke away from the church. He later gathered his followers and left Earth for Fortune Station, after Al-Salid declared jihad on the Earth. So, they've been there five years? Just over. Guess they'll know the place pretty well by now. Are there any plans, blueprints, anything? Yeah, the courier has them. So, you want me to take this guy out? Basically, but caveat. Yeah? I don't like the sound of that but, Mbeke. We've already sent two other operatives in. We haven't heard from them. It's been a month since the last one went in. They might still be alive in there, we just don't know. The place is pretty isolated, high orbit, sealed up pretty tight. His followers are probably his best defense, and we don't know how many of them he has up there with him. There's a lot of unknowns. Sounds like. You sure you're not just trying to get rid of me? You still haven't really explained why he's a threat. Good cover for tying up my loose end. No, we want this man gone. We hear he's killing his followers. He's probably killed our two guys, too. We don't know where his loyalties lie. And the feeling here is that he may throw in with the UIN, give them a base to work from in exchange for territory somewhere on Earth after the war, after we're all dead. If he's killing his followers, I'd say he's capable of anything. Why do people follow people who kill them in the name of God? I don't know, but we certainly don't want to get into a discussion on the morality of killing in the name of God now, do we, B.C.? B.C. shakes his head in agreement as Mbeki continues. We've hired a ship to take you to the station. The details are in the package. The pilot's a good NCC man. Treat him well. Did the same guy bring the others to the station, too? No. The other operatives left from Earth. This pilot and his ship are based out of Lunar Prime. Why? Just curious. And you say he's a Christian? There are some of us up there, Campion. You should know. You're supposed to be ministering to them. Thanks, Mbeki. I'll try to remember that. Be careful, BC. Don't blow your cover any worse than it's already been blown. It's not. Campion, please. This assignment will help you to keep laying low. Or get me laid low. It's not you we want dead at the end of all of this. That's a comfort. <laughs> what about just laid? Funny. Watch for the package, Campion. Drove out. Diana out. Two weeks before the Vatican finally calls back. Finally. 
And this is the best they can do? Two weeks of being the Cardinals' lackey. Two weeks of being a good little PR flack. Two weeks before they finally call back. Finally. Two weeks of waiting for my head to either implode or explode. And this is the best they can do. A whacked-out cult leader on an old station out in the middle of nowhere. What kind of threat is that? A threat to me when I wade into the viper's nest to try to choke the life out of the king snake. That's what kind of threat it is. The Vatican doesn't want me dead, but I'm sure at this point they wouldn't mind somebody doing them the favor of my removal. Hope I can stay alive. Have to do some research of my own before that package arrives. BC's contemplation is cut short by the buzz of his intercom. A priority signal punches through. Father Campion? BC? It's Mark Edwards. You available? Audio only, come on. Um, sure, Governor, just a second. How about that lunch? I'd like to keep my promise. Can't keep putting him off. Sure, let me check the schedule to see if the Cardinal needs me anywhere, okay? Hold on. BC takes a deep breath. Shouldn't snap at the Governor. Not good. Sure, I'm okay today. When do you want to meet? Could we make it soon? An early lunch? These days my schedule isn't entirely under my own control. I've got appointments jamming me all afternoon. Why don't you come on over and meet me at my offices? We can head for this seafood place I know on the third level of the atrium. Looks out over the central pool. Really nice. How about it? Sure, Governor. I'll be there in about 20 minutes. I'm still moving a little slow these days. All right. See you then. BC packs away the CCU. He checks his appearance in the mirror, then heads out to meet the Governor. He crosses the main mall of the atrium as he walks from the Vatican section to Governor Mark Edwards' offices, taking in the smell of the fresh-cut grass. It almost smells like the outdoors here, almost like Earth. Of course, on Earth, the gravity makes the pine trees pointy cones. Here, they just shoot up, even all the way around. They look like big green brushes, weird-looking things. At least they smell right. A monitor in the mall wall, near the entrance to the Lunar Prime Government Center, blares a news report as BC passes. Has finally spoken, today claiming that it has been attacking Vatican City along with UTZ and Lunar Prime Holdings because it has proof the Vatican has been collaborating with the UTZ in attacking the UIN. Oh shit. BC stops to watch the report. Most observers on Earth and the Moon are dismissing the UIN statements as attempts to deflect blame from the UIN themselves in the wake of the killing of Lunar Prime Governor Meredith McIntyre. This is the UIN's first statement since their intensified campaign against targets on the Earth and the Moon began after the Governor's death. This latest round of finger-pointing by the Universal Islamic Nation rings rather hollow in light of their recent activities. In other news... That's it? No hard facts? No mention of me? Or the OPO? Just general statements of blame? What do they know, then? What do they have? B.C. keeps walking. When he gets to Edward's offices, his secretary send B.C. right in. B.C., how are you? How's the tongue? Funny question. Guess he means well. I can talk again. Thank you. How are you doing, Governor? Call me Mark. I'm calling you BC, after all. Okay, Mark. I found out something I thought you'd like to know. We did some digging on that Nita Bendix. It was taken for granted she worked here, but she was never hired. It looks like she just showed up two years ago. She was never officially cleared as a lunar security cop. She had forged credentials, stolen uniform, the whole spy deal. She infiltrated, and she fooled us. We look and feel pretty stupid here. I'm sorry, BC. Two years, and no one suspected a thing? She's been on rosters and personnel charts. She was good. She came in right after McIntyre was sworn in, as far as we can pinpoint. That's some curious timing. I know. After everything you told me, that sort of sticks. 
I've got some of my good people looking into this. People I can trust, you know? Hey, let's get out of here. What do you say? You hungry? Sure. You said seafood? The Captain's Table restaurant on the main mall's third floor overlooks the atrium, the central pool, and the pines. B.C. and Edwards sit at a table at the window. They speak of sports, recent movies, B.C.'s recuperation, and other small talk. Over the course of the meal, Edwards apologizes a few more times, which B.C. eats up along with his swordfish and salad. I like this guy. He's real. In a way, I'm working him, working to build his confidence to my advantage. But the affection is genuine. He's a good man. I'll try not to fuck him over. Hope they don't ask me to. Over coffee, Edwards asks, B.C., can I ask you a favor? What is it? Well, I could use the help of someone with your insights and experience. I know there's stuff you can't tell me. Things we can't discuss. B.C. starts to interrupt and protest. Edwards holds up his hand. No, let me finish. I respect you, Father, and would appreciate anything you might be able to share with me, information-wise. I don't expect to hear state secrets. But I'm hoping you can help me as a sort of unofficial advisor. Wow. I can't believe I've gotten to him this completely. They'll be happy with this back home. Can't be over-enthusiastic, though. I'm honored, Mark. I really am. I just don't think I can. The Bible isn't too big on letting a man serve two masters. I'm not sure the Vatican would approve, to be honest with you. I don't expect to be your master, B.C. I'm looking for friendly advice and good counsel. This is unexpected, Mark. But I'd certainly like to help you. Tell you what, if the Vatican says it's okay... I'll be glad to give you any advice I can. I can tell, all politics aside, you're a good man, Mark. You'll be a great governor. I'd like to help you. Well, now I'm honored, B.C. Thanks. Thank you. It means a lot to me. I'm still trying to get a handle on everything. This is not something I asked for. <laughs> That's why you'll probably do a better job than someone who would ask for it. A lot of times, the best leaders are the ones who are thrust into greatness or have greatness thrust upon them when they least expect it. Somebody famous said that. You're doing fine. How's that for counsel? Don't flatter me, B.C. Just advise me. But thanks. Now I've got to explain my going away. Mark, I've got to take care of some business for the Pope in the next few days. There are always going to be times I have to take off and I can't and won't be able to tell you what I'm doing. You have to understand that. The uh, cost of my cooperation, I suppose. And coming up is one of those times. I uh, understand that, I think. Whatever help you can offer, B.C., you know I appreciate it. Edwards takes care of the check and stands to leave. Thanks for lunch, Mark. Thank you, B.C. I gotta run, but I'll be in touch. See you when you get back. Unofficial advisor to the governor of the Lunar Free State. That'll look good on the old resume. Not bad. I hope I can trust him. He seems to trust me. It doesn't feel like a setup. We'll see. Back in his rooms, BC does a little freelance research on Fortune Station. He checks in the history files. The computer gives him general background information. Many wealthy individuals began building orbital retreats in the 20s to escape perceived overpopulation on Earth. This overpopulation was mostly a marketing tool used to scare paranoid wealthy individuals into buying orbital getaways. At first, only the very wealthy could afford to build, staff, and maintain these luxury stations. Most rotated to provide artificial gravity, using systems that required small crews to maintain and run them. These crews had to be fed and housed. The necessities of life had to be provided for on each station, for both the crew and the inhabitants. All these people had to live, eat, and breathe on the station. An expensive proposition at the time, given their level 
level of technological advancement. In some cases, the crews were shipped on and off a station between long shifts, but this alternative was also costly. History off. Too general. Anything on Fortune Station itself? One entry. Brief description. Tell me about it. Fortune Station. Built for the Sultan of Brunei. Abandoned by the Sultan eight years later. Renovated and restored by STSC, LIC. Absorbed by the Universal Trade Zone in 2034. Used on and off until the end of 2062, when it was again left abandoned. Its high orbit and off-the-beaten-path location may get an unattractive target for future renovation and redevelopment. Fortune Station is currently abandoned. End of entry. Out of date, evidently. Might as well wait for the info package. My profile's gonna be low, all right. Very low. Place doesn't sound like it would make for much of a base for the UIN. But I guess any possible foothold has to be eliminated. Life remains interesting. Mark Edwards really surprised me at lunch today. He could just be playing his own game. I don't know. Maybe I can trust him. Of course, I never assume that. That was Chapter 11 of Vatican Assassin on Glow in the Dark Radio, a special 15th anniversary edition with voice cameos and a little bit from Keith Hughes in there as Cardinal Anderson. Thanks again to Keith. You'll find his stuff at penslinger.com, his podcast and his time travel science fiction. Thank you, Keith. Well, BC's got a new assignment. He's off to Fortune Station. And he has lunch with the governor, so, you know, things are looking up, maybe. We'll see. We'll find out in our next chapter, chapter 12, on our next episode of Glow in the Dark Radio. Again, you can get the ebook of this book, Vatican Assassin, the 15th Anniversary Edition, for free. Pretty much everywhere you can buy ebooks, you can get this one for free, except for Amazon. More details at glowinthedarkradio.com or mikeluoma.com. You can head to my site, too, for the links to Patreon, or just go to patreon.com slash glowinthedarkradio if you'd like to help support the podcast. I have people who are members at $2 a month, $5 a month, and $10 a month helping support what I do to bring you the podcast. So if you want to get in on that and help be a supporter, there's absolutely no obligation. But again, you can go to patreon.com slash glowinthedarkradio, or just go to my sites. That's MikeLuoma.com, M-I-K-E-L-U-O-M-A.com, or GlowInTheDarkRadio.com. That is all for this episode. I'm your host, your writer and reader, Mike Luoma. Thank you again for listening to Glow in the Dark Radio. Glow in the Dark Radio. This podcast presentation, copyright 2022 by Michael F. Luoma, and is protected under a Creative Commons Attribution Non Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License. CC by NCND 4.0. Music by Kevin McLeod. You can find his work at acompetech.com and filmmusic.io. Mike's books are available in ebook, paperback, and audiobook wherever you find books online. Get links and more details at glowinthedarkradio.com and MikeLuoma.com. This has been a presentation of Glow in the Dark Radio. Glow in the Dark Radio.